Welcome to Inside Sim Racing. I'm Darren Ganji, and I'm here to present my first look at the next level racing motion platform that's being distributed by Pagnian Imports. And it goes for $2,800 here in the States, $3,000 in Australia, and $1,700 British pounds in Europe. Shipping is free to most locations, and you're just going to have to check with the uh, distributor closest to you. There's three distributors uh, worldwide, uh, so just check with them and uh, if you're close enough, shipping's probably gonna be free. And here's a little history on how they developed this platform. Pagnian got introduced to a European company called Motion Systems, and they specialize in professional simulation solutions on a worldwide scale. If you go to their website at motionsystems.eu, you're gonna find a wide range of motion platforms from what I have here, all the way up to full-on military motion simulators. As a matter of fact, they also developed the motion platform that I got to test at E3 at the uh, PlaySeat booth last year. Pagnian worked with them on design and engineering and making improvements and then began testing prototypes. Their companies came together with a crystal clear goal to combine their expertise to make the world's best value motion platform in terms of performance, design, ease of use, and quality of product. So let's talk about some specs that I pulled from their website. Up to 4,000 motion updates per second sent to the controller. Compact design to fit under the GT Ultimate seat. Actuators provide up to 600 newtons of thrust and push. Can support up to 150 kilograms or 330 pound users. It connects via USB port and with plug and play software that supports all major racing titles as well as some flight sims and that's on the PC only. It operates at under 57 decibels. It's manufactured in Europe. Max angular displacement for pitch and roll is plus or minus 10 degrees. Max speed is 10 degrees a second. And max vertical lift is 10 centimeters. There's also a spec max acceleration 360 degrees slash S2. And excuse me for not knowing what that is, but I'm not sure. Some more specifications, the power source is 110 to 240 VAC, 50 to 60 Hertz, and the max power consumption is 160 Watts. So besides being directly compatible with the next level GT Ultimate chassis, which is what I've got it hooked up to behind me here, uh, there's been some guys that have hooked up to a Buttle Revolution, the Fanatic Ren Sport, and I may even hook it up to my JCL Sim Racing chassis, and I have a, an old JEG seat. But basically, the, the platform measures about 15 inches is the width where you can uh, attach your seat to. If you needed to, you could drill it out. There's some spots where you could drill for your particular application, uh, or it just may fit depending on what type of seat you're using. But again, the GT Ultimate bolts right on up to it. It comes with the motion platform, the control unit, power supply with adapters depending on your region, as a matter of fact, I got one that came from Europe and it had European plugs. Power supply looks identical to a Thrustmaster power supply from the T500. So I just ended up using the power cord for that. It worked fine. Also comes with the hardware to assemble it, additional side plate uprights to lower the seat, and an instruction manual. The hardware assembly instructions were lacking a little bit, but I was able to figure it out. These stability arms were included with the side uprights, but not mentioned in the manual. And I asked Hess at Pagnian Imports uh, about the installation of them. He said you didn't need it, but I installed them anyway. There were spots for it on the platform and on the original base, so I just used them anyway. Just I figured out a little bit of extra stability. Once you get all the hardware set up, you download the software and firmware from the Pagnian website. Load it up, and I also had to do a firmware update, which was really simple. But anyway, load that up do the firmware update, and you're pretty much ready to go. A little bit more about the hardware. The platform is rock solid and compatible with the next level accessories, except maybe the keyboard tray. You could attach it, but the thing might be just moving all over the place, so I just opted not to attach it. Shifter mount works great, and you could attach it on either side, depending on which side you're normally shifting on. US here, we uh, shift on the right, so I've got mine on the right, but you could attach it on the left if you want. It's got the, uh, the mounting spots for that. The actuators on the platform are set up horizontally and then attached to this cam mechanism. Definitely unique compared to how we're used to seeing motion systems set up. Uh, a lot of times you'll see vertical actuators on the back of the seat, or in the case of like a D-Box or that play seat setup that these guys actually develop. Uh, there's little actuators uh, either at all four corners of the rig or at three spots. 
Uh, but this is the first time I've ever seen them mounted horizontally like this and hooked up to a cam mechanism, so definitely unique. Back to the software, there's two PDFs at the website and at uh, motionsystems.eu. One for general setup and then uh, one how to develop individual profiles. You can definitely tell it was written in a different language and then converted into English because there's a little bit lost in translation but you can pretty much get the gist of it. I would have liked to seen a little bit more detail on, on what exactly each slider does but again, and I'll get to that in a minute here about tuning. From unpacking to the installation, I was driving in iRacing in about an hour and a half to two hours, so not too long to get this up and running, you know, especially if you have a GT Ultimate. It's pretty much a plug and play experience, and when I say pretty much, I'll get to that in a minute again, because I actually consider it a plug, tune, and play experience to really get the most out of it. It's compatible with just about every racing title on the market. Assetto Corsa, all the Codemasters titles, Game Stock Car, iRacing, Project Cars, R-Factor 2, Race Room Experience, and a lot more. You can also set it up in direct input mode and it will move based on your position. So you could set it up to, to work with the T300 and I actually tried it. So if you turn the wheel, you get movement. Hit your gas pedal, you know, you get movement there. So you can set up a joystick. I'm thinking maybe even a joy pad. I'm, I want to try it with like Ride uh, and see if I can set up just the Xbox 360 controller and, and have it move based on positions there. I think that would actually be pretty cool and add something to a title like Ride. I also think that it can work off of force feedback cues in that direct input mode, but I need more time with it to figure it out. That's why this is my first look too, because there's just a lot to do you know, as far as the, the tweak in the software goes. And the software does provide a good amount of adjustability, and there's five main sliders to adjust intensity. And again, it doesn't say, but I'm assuming motion handles the overall intensity. And then it's got bumps, roll, pitch, and heave. And then there's two others, but they're grayed out, and I, I'm, I think it's because those first five work with uh, two degrees of freedom. Uh, and that's what this platform does. I believe the software will work up to six degrees of freedom because there's different settings within the software and they're listed as six degrees of freedom or six DOF. So anyway, that's what you can uh, adjust. So far I've tried it with Dirt Rally and iRacing. Uh, I did find that you need to adjust it per car and maybe even per track. But there's a way you can clone the profile and then adjust it per car and per track and save pretty much as many profiles as you want. So that would probably be the best way to go about it. Uh, by the way, they've been patching that software pretty regularly. So they're committed to keeping up to date with you know, all the latest titles, Project Cars, iRacing, Assetto Course, and all that stuff. If they come up with an update that's going to affect the motion or there's a new title that comes out, they're going to come out with a profile for it. So back to the plug and play experience. Uh, as quickly as I got it up and running, uh, there's a lot of time that it's going to take to tune it to get it right. And sure, the, the base, and again, I've only tried it with iRacing and dirt. Per car, per track, there's going to take some tuning, and that's going to take some time. So I, I would call it, again, a plug, tune, and play experience. And that tuning could take a couple minutes per car, you know, depending on how perfect you want it, or a couple hours. And the thing with motion, too, if you've got it wrong, it can honestly ruin the experience, ruin your sim racing experience. But if you get it right, it can really enhance your sim racing experience. So in my opinion, it's worth it to tune it and get it fine-tuned to where it feels right to you. So far, I'm liking this thing. This is actually the first uh, motion platform that we've reviewed on the show and gone in depth that we've, where we've had it in our studio and been able to really take our time with it and get the most out of it and tune it. Uh, so that being said, I'm gonna take some time before I put out a full review of it to give you my full opinion on it. But I gotta say, I do like it. Again, it's affordable. Uh, it, there's lots of tuning options and I don't think I've even scratched the surface. Besides those sliders, you can create scripts and really tweak uh, the different settings uh, in, in the particular you know, titles that you're running or profiles that you're using. So I want to try it with Assetto Corsa, Project Cars, pretty much all the titles I mentioned. And I'm probably going to post some videos of those, maybe do some talk and drives, maybe show you how I'm going over some of the tuning setups uh, and uh, have those up you know, within the next... Pro I'm probably not going to have a full review done of this until mid-summer, probably somewhere in July because I've got E3 coming up next week. 
and then I want to, again, spend some time with it and really get this thing dialed in. So there's my first look and impressions of the Next Level Racing Motion Platform. Again, you can check it out if you go to pagnian.com. Pick your distributor and you can find out about pricing, availability, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and like I said, I'm going to spend some more time with it. I'd like to thank Hess at Pagnian for uh, sending me this motion platform to play with. Again, so far I'm really enjoying it. My wife got to drive it. She enjoyed it. So we're going to have some fun with it. So that's going to wrap things up for Inside Sim Racing. I'm Darren Ganji. I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time.